In this video, I'm going to tell you the six things you must know about your rights to overtime pay. My name is Matt Eason. I've been practicing law for 25 years, representing employees in cases for non-payment of overtime, meal and rest breaks, misclassification, and things of that nature. I want to make sure that you understand six basic things that you need to complete your research on or talk to your attorney about to make sure that you understand your rights to overtime pay. The first thing you need to know about your rights to overtime pay is the overtime rate. This is probably what most people already understand, but so we're on the same page. When you work overtime, you're entitled to one and a half times your regular rate of pay after you work eight hours in a day or 40 hours in a week in California. In addition to that, if you work more than 12 hours a day, you're entitled to double time. The big thing that some people aren't aware of or get confused about is the seventh day. If you work seven days in your typical work week, on the seventh day, you're entitled to time and a half for the first eight hours of the day and double time for everything thereafter. That's in the same work week. The second thing you must know about when it comes to the non-payment of overtime is what are your penalties. So besides receiving the back pay that you're entitled to, there are several types of penalties you might be entitled to. For example, in California, if your wage statement is not correct, meaning it doesn't show your proper wage rate, such as your overtime, or the number of hours you worked, your employer is charged a penalty of $50 for the first offense and $100 for each additional offense up to $4,000 per employee. So that can add up significantly. In addition to the wage statement violations, there is the right for waiting time penalties when you've left your employment. If you were not paid for all of your wages, including overtime, you get one full day's wages for each day your employer doesn't timely pay you up to 30 days after you've left. That's not one month, that's 30 working days. So you have the right to the wage statement penalties and the waiting time penalties. On top of that, the law also provides that the employer has to pay for your attorney's fees to enforce those. The third thing you must know when it comes to your rights to overtime is which law to apply. We have federal law, we have state law, and we have local law. Generally speaking, the good news is, as an employee, you get to apply the law most favorable to you. So if California's got a better provision, you can use it. If federal's got a better provision, you can use that. That's the good news. Unfortunately, it's actually a little bit more confusing than that, in that within the state law of California, for example, we have multiple wage orders that apply to different industries. So you have to determine which industry you're working in to determine which wage order applies to you. And then based on that, you can determine what your rights are. The fourth thing that you should know about when it comes to overtime is what we call off the clock issues. And that's when your employer doesn't pay you for things such as having to come into work early, clean your station, having to load your vehicle, possibly having to check your internet from home or mail from home, requiring you to monitor your phone when you're off duty, things like that. During those hours in which you're under the control of your employer, you're entitled to overtime even though you're not officially on the clock. The fifth thing you must know about when it comes to the right to overtime is what we call misclassification. Certain employees admittedly do not receive overtime. If you're truly an executive, an administrative, or a professional employee that receives a certain level of compensation, you're not entitled to overtime. However, we regularly see employers will label or give you a title that doesn't necessarily match your job duties. And in that situation, you're very likely entitled to overtime. And the real issue that we typically look at is your primary job duties, and are they the exercise of independent judgment? Do you make major decisions without being supervised or controlled? And in which case, you might be properly classified as exempt. However, if you're not making major decisions and you're instead just applying process to the day, then you are probably misclassified and entitled to overtime. The sixth thing you must know about when it comes to your rights to overtime is whether or not you're misclassified as an independent contractor when in reality you should be an employee. We regularly see employers try and skirt the employment duties and obligations by trying to label someone as an independent contractor. They will say, well, I'm just going to treat you as a 1099. I'm not going to pay you wages. I'm just going to pay you an hourly rate. The law doesn't allow that if you really are acting as an employee-employer relationship. And the determination for that is a very long, complicated factor analysis. But the real big question is control. Does the employer control your day-to-day -day activities and your day-to-day -day work? And if they do, then you're probably misclassified as an independent contractor. In contrast, if the employer just simply says, I want you to do this project and leaves you to do it however you want, 
then you might actually be an independent contractor. Those are the six things I think you must know about your rights to overtime as you prepare to meet with an attorney to discuss your case. If you're in California and you have additional questions, I do hope you'll reach out to me. My name again was Matthew Eason. I'm with the law firm of Eason and Tambernini. We're located at 1234 H Street, Sacramento, California, 95814. You can call me anytime at 916-438-1819. You can also reach me on the web at www.capcitylaw.com. I wish you all the best and thanks for watching.